along with the fact that you've got production deadlines and they're very, very tight. Um, so what do they look for in candidates? And this is generally, this is true specifically for r &H, but it's generally true for the industry, that they're looking for competency. So the first thing, whether you're on the technical side or the existing side, first thing that matters is your competency. You've got to have your chops and you've got to be able to show them so that way people can, can see that, whether it's in your artwork or in your programming, it needs to be obvious that you know what you're doing. And then they want people who are critical thinkers and problem solvers, particularly because we're often dealing with things that nobody's ever dealt with before. We're inventing new ways of doing things. And I'll give you an example. When I was at Disney, they decided that they were going to do Fantasia in watercolor. Well, why not? I mean, you know, people have been doing watercolor for centuries, so let's just do an animation of watercolor. But when we went, when they tried to film it, it came out all washed out because it was watercolor, and watercolor doesn't have a lot of pigment in it, so it just didn't get picked up by the camera. Because when they designed the camera system, they were designing it for the traditional animation paint. So never, nobody ever thought, hey, let's do it with watercolors. But the artist just said, well, we might do it with watercolors. So then the technologist has had to come up with a way of making that happen and making it look right without it being too much work. Um, another important thing is having good communication skills. So you might think being social and keeping up with your friends is a frivolous thing, but actually in the workplace, keeping up with what people are doing with work, letting your boss know what's going on, finding out what's going on, talking to people in different departments, is critical, it's critical. It's the type of thing where you know, you'll know you be talking to somebody and you'll find out that somebody who's going to be feeding you stuff, they're running late, but suddenly was that due to your deadline. If you could tell your boss, hey, these guys are running late, it's going to make you look good, but it's going to give the boss the opportunity to maybe rearrange things so that way there's not a gap in the schedule. Um, ability to work independently in teams. Most of the work for the film industry is very team-based. It's unlikely that you would be kind of a lone wolf person does happen sometimes, like you might be the only person who can do that, or you might be the only person who's free to do that, but it's important that you can work in a team. Uh, deal with deadlines during the last talk I was in, we talked about that a lot. Um, honesty, integrity, respect for others, all these things are just basic uh, things. So we do have apprenticeships, and this is something I think is really important that um, I want to say, like, a lot of studios are willing to put a little bit of training into you so you can learn whatever their system is. But it's really important if you don't have any work experience to seek out an internship or an apprenticeship. In r and case, our apprenticeships are for people who have graduated, but in a lot of cases you can get a summer internship. And this is a, another thing that you need to think about is that you might think, well, hey, I just finished college, I got an internship. But this could apply years down the line. You know, like maybe you've been out of school for five years or for 10 years, you still may want to take an apprenticeship in something that's new to you to learn more about that. And it, it's a good way if you're, like let's say you've been a compositor for five years and you're thinking, well, hey, maybe I want to be a lighter or maybe I want to go into animation or maybe I want to go into some other area of the industry. You know, consider doing an apprenticeship and it could be even, an informal internship or apprenticeship where you find somebody who's really good at doing that and just go and ask them some questions, ask if you can get some advice from them. Um, so, for assistants, like when you're just graduating, I mean, these are some production assistant, help desk IT, render IO coordinator, or like a software development internship. Um, at RH, it's graduate or PhD students. At Disney, we actually had people with bachelor's. Um, for the software. So it, it just depends. And here's the other thing. If you're thinking about it, like let's say you want to go work at Pixar. Well, go out and see if Pixar has internships. Actually, they have them. And you don't need to have a degree to, to get in. You know, then, you know, apply. Try it out. You know, they're opening up a studio in Vancouver. They may, they may go, hey, you're already in Canada? Good. It's, you know, we don't have to worry about, you know, visas or anything. There's an opportunity for you there. And if they go, oh, we don't have any there, but we have some in Emeryville in Northern California, great. You know, it works out. But definitely apply for those internships. But what if a company doesn't have an internship? So, knows that Leica, 
in Portland, we had a, a guy come in and he just went up to the front desk and said, do you have any internships? And they said, well, not really. Well, here's my resume. So the manager looked at the resume and said, oh yeah, come on in. And the next thing you know, like a week later, he was hired and, and worked, had an internship. So, you know, sometimes you can have an internship created for you where you have the opportunity to learn. And another thing I recommend about the internships is that people, it, it gives you the opportunity to find out what you like. Here you are in school, you're trying out a lot of different things in your classes, and that's great. And you get grades on it, you might do well, you might not do well, but it doesn't really tell you what the work like is like, the work environment is like. And so when you get an internship, it's an opportunity to find out, is this what you really like to do? Are these the people? you really want to be hanging out with for 8 to 10 to 12 hours of your day, every day. And you may find out that it's not what you like. So it's really important to actually do an internship and do the best you can, don't burn any bridges, but it gives you a chance to find out, hey, you know, I tried Render.io, I hate it. I don't ever want to do this again. And if you find out that you're not liking it, see if you can figure out something else you might like and, and see, you know, if you can learn something from the person who's doing what you're interested in. If maybe you want to be an animator, but you're doing render I.O., well then go and start doing informational interviews with animators. Do you guys know what informational interviews are? Okay. So, what you want to do is you want to approach somebody. Like to say, if you approach me and said, can I informational interview you? You would say, okay, I would like 20 minutes of your time, and you want to stick to that 20 minute time frame. Come up with maybe between eight and eight and 12 questions to ask that person. You ask them how they got started, what they think is hard about the job, what's their favorite part of the job, what keeps them going, uh, what happens when you're unemployed, because in both games and in, in the effects industry and the animation industry, you'll, you will be going through periods of unemployment. And they can be long periods of unemployment, and this does not matter how good you are. It's not a question of how good you are, it's what's available. If, if people are not greenlighting movies, if they're not making movies and there's no money to fund a movie, you will not be working. Um, games will often hire people for the run of the game. You have to wrap that game by mid-October for it to ship onto the shelves. Then you may not be working for the next three months or a year. You don't know. It's not really predictable. And you may find that you, know, you, you work for three months and then you're moving somewhere that's not in your towns just so you can keep working. So you need to, to plan for that. And uh, that's, that's just an important thing. So you know, when you have an internship or when you're at a place, you know, take the time to get to know people who are the big people in your company, you know, the really key people. Go and talk to them and ask what makes them successful. And then try, out, try doing some of those things that they suggest. So, um, so for RNH, pretty much we hire people who have one specialty. Smaller studio will hire people who work with multiple specialties. A place like Disney, you are the best person in that specialty, and that's why they hired you. And if you want to advance, you have to kill the person ahead of you. It is very competitive. But I will tell you, like at Lyco, we like people who are modelers and compositors. The reason why is you do the modeling at the beginning of the movie, and then you're done. So if that person can, can also do compositing, they can also work at the end of the movie. And that ensures that, that you can have like a month gap, perhaps, between your work, but you're pretty much continuously employed. So, um, you know, at, at R&H, we have lighters who also do texture painting, and we have compositors who also like. Um, doing lighting and compositing is a common combination. So, do we have a hiring season? The answer is no. Uh, we hire whenever we've got work. So sometimes we have a lot of work, we have a big project going through, and we hire a ton of people, and other times we don't have a lot of work, so we don't hire. And that's true. So the thing to do for this, I'm not really sure what the best sources are for games, but you know, probably some of the take a look at the game developer magazines and take a look and see who's working on what games, what games have been announced that they're in production, if they'll tell you. Um, going to GDC is a good way to network, find out what people are working on. You might get an idea of what is up and coming and be able to get a job at that company. 
For movies, definitely you want to be reading the Hollywood Reporter and Variety and see what is going into production. Because you'll hear, oh, hey, they're going to be working on a new Pirates movie. Okay, you know, who do you know who might be working at that? And then start networking with that person. So that way when the project comes up and they need to hire people, they'll be thinking of you. So um, I will probably come back to a page that will say about how to apply. But what I want to say about this is that regardless of what company you're applying to, and that's true for uh, studio, that's true for a gaming company, go to their website and see what they are asking you to do. This is your first test on whether you can follow directions. If you cannot follow the directions to send your stuff to that company, they probably don't want to talk to you. So if they want your stuff on the web, 